gentlemen. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in a very different place than I normally am. Instead of going sideways, I'm at Gainesville International Raceway and we have right here one of these Pro Mod big turbo cars that runs about five seconds in the quarter mile and has about 3,500 horsepower. So let's go check out what's inside this car. First off, you can see the giant rear slicks in the back. It's like a full fiberglass, carbon fiber, and chromoly car. Very, very nice. Everything on this car is just like ridiculous. And then the best part is that it's not running just one, but two Garrett GTX 3533R turbos, which have a 88 millimeter compressor wheel. And they're making about 3,500 horsepower. He was just telling me that for fuel wise they have 32 injectors on this thing so you can imagine how much fuel has to go into in this car to make that power and also they're running m1 methanol fuel so it's just straight methanol the stuff that you kind of don't want to be standing next to like noel is right now if the car were on he'll probably be crying right now this turbo has a wheel speed sensor so you can tell the turbine rpms then this one is not water cooled like our standard GTX turbos. Instead of air cool, you can see this little fin, so it's just cooled by air and oil. Um, then you can see on the back, it looks a little strange. It actually has a mount for the, com for the turbine wheel because it's so heavy, so you actually have to support it from the chassis. It has one, two braces right here. Then on the back side, you can't see it from there, but you see these bolts. It has an X pattern bolt, like a cross pattern. That way, it's like a safety mechanism. If the exhaust wheel were to break, it gets contained. It doesn't just shoot out of the side into the crowd and just like be a bad story. So it's a bunch of cool safety features. Also, I believe this exhaust housing is made out of stainless steel, so it's very, very tough. It has the vent clamp for the exhaust housing mounting, and it also has the vent clamp for the compressor housing mounting. So it's very easy to service this turbo. All right, guys, and so now I have Steve with me, and he's gonna talk to you a little bit about the aeromotive products that are installed in this car, and kind of like, what's going on here? Um, hey, we're a, we're a company that uh, solves problems. So um, we come out of the racetrack, we identify a problem, we come up with a solution in the way of a product, then we test it, we market it and sell it. So this car is no different. When you look on this car, I mean, we evolved, um, we created a fuel pump and primarily it's a gear, a spur gear pump that we developed specifically for very high horsepower applications uh, that run methanol. So that particular pump you could buy is anywhere from a, a 14 to about a 35 gallon per minute pump. Um, we also acquired a company called Waterman a couple years ago. So 35 gallons a minute can go all the way up to 110 gallons a minute. You see the fuel cars here running nitro. Uh, those are our customers. So we have a lot of experience in, in providing uh, volume for cars that make anywhere from you know, 50 horsepower and with a one cylinder engine all the way up to 10,000 horsepower and this car is no different. This is our laboratory. With a fuel pump, you have to come up with, and this is an EFI package, a moped package, a regulator. A lot of companies don't understand regulators. What you do with a regulator is the first thing you do is you select a fuel pump to make as much volume to support the horsepower. Then you have to design the regulator to go with the fuel pump. So some people will mix and match regulators and think that, hey, that's a high pressure, low pressure, but you really have to match the regulator to the fuel pump in order to have a system that's gonna communicate with, with uh, um, the engine the way that it should and maintain the pressures that you're looking for. And then you need the appropriate filter, and we do those as well. The micron rating, uh, the number of pleats, the pressure drop, it's all critical. And, and what a lot of people don't understand is the inlet of virtually any fuel pump is far more critical than the outlet. So it's just like drinking out of a straw. If you poke a hole in the side of a straw, you can't suck out of a cup, but if you poke a hole in the side of a straw, you can still create pressure when you blow out of it. So fuel's no different. You have to make sure that the inlet of the fuel pump always has a clean, coarser filter than the outlet. You can get a lot away with a little bit of restriction on the outlet, but not on the inlet. And that's kind of our basics to fuel delivery um, and, and from the standpoint of why we do things. But this shows you that there's an application involved. 
we come out, we try it, we test it, we prove it, and then we sell it. That was some really valuable information. There's a lot of those things that I didn't know that worked that way. The man seat over here definitely showed me a couple of the secrets on these cars, and I'm very excited to see it run down that quarter mile later today. So, what kind of time were you guys running again? Um, well, we're hoping to run in the 570 range at close to 260 miles an hour. That's a very fast car. How much boost are you guys running at that uh, This particular class in NHRA Pro Mod, we are limited. Uh, our boost controller limits us to 36 pounds of boost. 36 pounds of boost, so you also are like adjust timing and fuel to maximize Correct. 36 pounds of yep. boost on 80 mi 88 millimeter wheels. Correct. Correct. And we run methanol, we have to run a three-speed transmission, we have to run a certain rear end gear, and we have to weigh a minimum of 2,650 pounds. I thought it was lighter. That's a lot of weight for this car. Well, that's part of the NHRA package. Is that This particular uh, combination, you have to weigh 2,650. The uh, blower cars, the uh, roots blown cars, you yeah. have to have a certain type of blower, a certain amount of overdrive, and they can weigh 2,600 pounds. And then the nitrous cars are, are I believe, with 2,425 pounds. That's a lot of stuff that I didn't know either. That's crazy. That these cars are really fast. Even though they weigh a lot more than I thought they weigh. That that's that's it. <laughs> yeah. They're a lot heavier than you think. Yeah. For sure. Thank you so much Steve, Thank for you. the information. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll see you around. Okay. One of the cool things that I want to share with you guys is about the Garrett turbos. You see, this category is limited to 88 millimeters of wheel size and then 30 psi of boost i believe it was but 36, 36 psi of boost that's what it was that's what it was all right so 36 psi of boost but now you gotta be able to make the most horsepower you can between the limit of the turbine size and the boost that you can run so it means it's all down to airflow volume and tuning so if you got a good tuner and you got a turbo that has a high efficiency like the Garrett turbos especially on that GTX 5533 turbo that thing just like dominates the field we're now waiting for a delicious funnel cake meantime all the cars are going by here just so loud I could barely hear anything because I have the earplugs but I feel the whole vibration is shocking my whole body and everything I want to go into Sunday, have not had to pull the suits yet. side-by-side -side run, Tommy Johnson climbing out of his car and walking away. And for the Make-A-Wish team, they had a very difficult run in Phoenix. And they came here and really looked like they had very aggressive early. There's where John gets across, and that really didn't look like a huge kabang. This car built by Jerry Bickle. It's a Mustang. It's a turbo. He was normally a... Jim. So Jim Harrison's in the partner as well as Richard Freeman. He was 23 in the tree 
last time. So we've got wow. guys to figure it out. So here we go. Eric Anders not qualified. Steve Matusik with the four. The turbo cars are spoiling them up. Time 576 for the one and 258 miles an hour by the skin of his teeth, Steve Matuzic. Well, I'm about to head back home. The IRS, the, the LRS car is getting taken apart once again or being put back together. I'm not sure. I know they're working on it. Everybody's gone over here now, so we're just probably gonna call and head home. It's super cold. They didn't bring a jacket. I'm freezing. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get out of here. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully on another cool video. And I should have the 36 back running by now. Bye racetrack. Till next time, which I'll probably be drifting instead of drag racing, but it was definitely a lot of fun.